All right. Sound the sirens. This is going to be the TJ episode. We haven't heard from you guys since the TJ hiring. So They haven't heard from us. They haven't heard from us. That's true. So uh, let's get Mike's opinion on it. I know you were kind of critical for a couple, like the first day or so. Yeah, I don't know if I was critical. I, I think it's the right hire. I think it was... Unfortunately, one of the only possibilities just with the whole financial situation and finding someone genuinely interested in staying, I would say long term, I think that list is pretty short. But the more I've kind of thought about it and looked kind of back at TJ's history at Iowa State, I think I think everyone should be extremely excited. I think TJ now has four or five years of head coaching experience and has proven that he can really recruit this area of the country really, really well. Probably better, probably as good as anyone has ever recruited this area um, at Iowa State. And I know one of the, the big things about Steve was, oh, Steve's a great recruiter. But I mean, if you look at the list of players TJ got, they were he's home run after home run. Yeah, he's had very few misses, and the ones he's really got right have been all time Iowa State greats. So I think it's gonna be awesome. I think even going into next year, I mean, we've already added a six eight foreign kid that can shoot. Hey, I, he got hurt early in the year, but he, the way his form is, he can looks like he can shoot. Right, which could, could not be said for many of our players last year. Um, so I think, I think he's gonna be really good, and I think two three years from now, I think we'll be back in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, like especially with Foster, Foster can shoot. Having two stretch like people above six eight, six eight, you can stretch it out and shoot it which will make it easier for Tyrese Hunter to get to the basket so I think our our team next year is going to be drastically different I don't I would be shocked if we made the NCAA tournament but I mean who knows we could add um, two more guys that will start and that all all it all comes down to who we get in transfers and the late pickups which which uh, I mean there's a lot of turmoil in the big Big 12 right now since Chaka Smart just left for McCart Marquette. And Long Kruger left too. Long Kruger just retired yesterday. And, I mean, we did Long, – we did Long Kruger in Iowa State, we went back and forth back in the Fred days. I mean, he's a great coach though too. So, I, I think he's – I think he brought three or four teams to the Final Four. I think he's the only Three coach, separate He's teams, the only coach yeah. to ever do that. Yeah, no, he's a really good coach. I'm happy to see him go – not because I don't like him. I think he's awesome. But having less good coaches in the Big 12 is good for Iowa State. So yeah, That's, I think, what Steve was. What's, what's such a hard thing with less Hall of Famers in the Big 12. I feel like TJ can – he's an up, up – still, I think, he's an up, up and coming coach. And he's in the place where he wants to be. His wife happened to be one of the best players to ever play at Iowa State. The girl side of things. And – uh do you, were you, do you remember when she beat uh, Michigan State? Yeah, no, she was really good. That was one of the only, like, girls games I ever saw when I was little, and I was pumped when that happened. Yeah, no, they were good. They were really good. Yeah, I think – I can honestly see, I mean, TJ putting down roots here, and he could be here 15, 20 years if things go the way we hope they go. Um, but, yeah, I just think – him being able to build a program the way he wants to, he's really good at building staff, a staff too. So I think he's going to have great assistant coaches. And I think once we get the players that fit his system, I think can go after off after the races, I think he'll magically back. And I think it's just gonna be a fun brand of basketball, which honestly in for Iowa state, if we play a fun basketball, the fans buy in and then they just make, I think it compounds on itself and makes us a really fun team to watch and also a really tough team to play. So I don't know if if we'll be a three seed ever again. Hopefully, in maybe five years, we'll be like look back, like holy crap, like, but this is a yeah, we're um, back to where we were. And but I, I just I don't know. It's really it's really tough. I, I don't think we can compare ourselves to the Fred era anymore. Um, if you look at before Fred and after Fred, we're we've kind of teetered upon being a borderline really good basketball program right now. I'd say we're average to below average. But I think TJ is has the ability to get talent to get us back, and then again, like if we rely on our crowd and our fans, like yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think we're like we've been worse than a program because we have a pretty short memory. Like it wasn't that long ago we had Tyrese and Shayok and Cam 
and beating the crap out of Kansas that one year. That wasn't that that long ago. That was like the last time we had fans. Which, yeah, no, for sure. Which, uh, like, this last year, like, the big schools kind of struggled, and I think Iowa State can put themselves back into the helm, but just the atmosphere. Like, Oklahoma, like, that's going to be hard to sell because Lon Kruger, like, they'll have to get a really good coach because, like, they don't have a home atmosphere. True. Same with Texas and we Baylor. Had, and Yeah, cool. no. So, I guess – I think as fans, we have to really rally behind TJ and just kind of instill the juice back into the program. But also, like, if you look at it, this is probably the best year to get a new coach. Yeah. That like, can recruit. The st- because the transfer market's going to be nuts this year. So, like, you can go from having, I mean, we'll hopefully stop talking about last year soon. But, like, last year we won zero Big 12 games. Like, we could be above 500 next year if things go right and we get the right transfers yeah like recent like history like iowa state programs usually flip over like pretty quickly like the tinsley and the tinsley advisor year we were picked last in the big 12. And we yeah al- should have almost won the national championship the michigan state game we, was the national championship arguably a top two team in the country that year and also i, I watched the uh kansas game from that year yeah it was the last week in january and we still weren't ranked. Yeah, that, that was great. I, Kansas was ranked 11, and we beat them by like 10. Yeah. We were significantly better. Tinsley. Best Marcus po- Pfizer. Best point guard. Marcus Pfizer, yeah. Top five, top three. Talented most player in Iowa State history. Player of the year. The only McDonald's All-American we ever got. He had that dunk against Texas. Yeah. Which, like, the fun, like... Hopefully we can interview some, at some point, but like we had a Iowa State was not very good when we grew up, so like I would just we my dad uh, had this VH, VHS shape of the one year of Var Advisor and Tinsley. Yeah, and like before YouTube, you had to buy a VCR tape to watch highlights, and we had like a little TV with a VCR in it upstairs. So like Ner- Ner- Nerf hoop, when me and Michael would play on Nerf hoop, and uh, we watched the VH, VHS so much that it broke. Yeah. Yeah, so we just watched That's over a, and over yeah. Tinsley to Pfizer. Yeah. So, like, the Tinsley advisor, Tinsley Monte thing kind of is skewed because maybe because we we're so obsessed with Tinsley growing up. And, but I don't know. He used to watch Tinsley highlights this year. Still insane. Where are you, where are you going with this? Um, I'm just saying how they got Tinsley. And, like, the I think back then we were, they were missing a point guard. They had Michael Nurse was playing point guard, right. and then they got one huge player, and they almost won the national championship. So yeah, but even but Pfizer was a junior that year. So like yeah. Pfizer's two, first two years. No, he was a sophomore. He had he left. No, he was a junior. He's a sophomore. Want to bet? I'll bet you fifty. And bucks. The, when we lost to Michigan State. Yeah, he was a junior. He left as a junior. That's what I'm saying. So he was a junior the year. No, he left. we're talking about the year before when. This, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Those, his first two years that I said they weren't great, and he was a five star recruit. They didn't have a point guard. Exactly. That would be like. Tyrese Hunter could be. I mean, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, so like we have, hopefully, the point guard of the future, already. So like, putting pieces around a point guard is much harder than trying to find a point guard to fit into pieces. Yeah. So hopefully Tyrese is that guy, and let's just say Foster is visor in this. Instance. Which I mean, if you look at the Fred era, like Royce era. Royce was kind of the point guard. We didn't really have a point guard that year. We were so talented, but like we never really put it together. We were an eight seed that year. Yeah. So like. The year later, we have Corey Lucius, really good point guard. Yeah. Had a really good year, just uh-huh. to play defense. Yeah. And then we get Monte. Yeah. Monte and DeAndre Kane. It's so like Monte does it like the, the Monte signing it's made great. the Fred era. Yeah. If we don't get Monte, we're never a three seed. I would argue Monte and TJ keeping Melvin. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. So. And Melvin doesn't get talked about enough either. But Melvin was fantastic. Yeah. He. Looking back at his highlights, he was not appreciated enough just because that team was so loaded. And, like, that team had Dustin Hogue. We need, we need like, a Dustin Hogue. Rebounds. I thought that would be Dubar, but. Yeah, he left. Dubar left. Tyler Harris left. I mean, t- Tyler Harris probably played the hardest, I think, out of yeah. all those teams consistently when he got his chance. Which, it yeah, just, but it just sucks how he didn't get to experience Hilton. Yeah. I feel like Hilton, he would have been a 
fan favorite for sure. Yeah, for sure. But best of luck to him. And uh, that Jenkins guy. Walk on. Walk on guy who came Did in to foul. Did Blackstone leave as well? Blackstone? No, I, I, I don't think so. Oh, oh I guess I, I just like, I heard Dubar and I think people got Dubar and Blackstone mixed up. So I, I, I just figured he also transferred, but I think he's still. I don't know. It's still up in the air. Yeah. Just because it's. But also, I think Jaden Walker sh- shows signs. T- I yeah. think he, he could be really good too mm-hmm. around the right pieces. And I mean, the thing is, as a point guard, if you have shooters around you, you can look a lot better. Yeah. And it also makes your job a lot easier when you kick it out to someone that can shoot. And especially that it's not been talked about enough. Like, fr- I, like the history of Iowa State when they're freshmen, they cr- when they struggled, the crowd would pick them up. Right. They didn't. They didn't have that. It was just. So we're struggling. Oh, it's quiet. Oh, like momen- now we're down thirty. Like momentum in basketball is like can Huge. T- can be tied with a crowd. Like it doesn't take like the o- Oklahoma game where we had one of the worst halves in Fred history. Fred's last game in Hilton coaching against Oklahoma. We scored like what twenty four points the first half, and then we just went on a run and scored like fifty nine points in the second half. Yeah, fifty nine so, points in the second half. Yeah, so. I think that needs to come back, and uh, I think it'll probably be like the Iowa game next year when the juice comes back, hopefully. We just got to show some shines to get some fans back in the the stands. And, uh, yeah, and there's some – yesterday, Caleb Girl is in the transfer portal, and uh, that would be sick if he he came back. It'd be be kind of a weird – thing obviously but i mean caleb is hasn't shown to be a program changing talent but i i identify with caleb because he grew up an iowa state fan so like i want caleb to come maybe be an off the bench guy but also just play like in a full hilton like get that experience like because just look think of all the kids in iowa that grew up dreaming to play at iowa state caleb had that yeah and then left yeah. Because we were We were just down. bad and obviously the program has changed since he left, but like if Caleb like if he's the guy that comes off the bench kinda like a John Neal, hits some threes, gets the crowd going. He yeah. plays defense, he's athletic. So I think like again, with with the right pieces, Caleb has a role. And if, if he comes back, I think that would be awesome. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, I happens. I hope to God we just get rid of the fire up the grill thing though. Yeah, but I think he'd be a fan, especially if the li- name and likenesses come until if that come into play next year. I think Caleb Grill jerseys will definitely be a top seller. I don't know because it's just like the story. It's it's a weird I'm, story. I've never I'm heard n- of it. Never heard of a player transferring away and then coming back mm-hmm. ever in any sport. Yeah, there's been yeah. That yeah, no. Is- I, ho- I hope he comes back. I think TJ obviously he had a big role at UNLV and had a pretty good year. So I hope he comes back, but again. Yeah. I mean, he committed to TJ originally at San South Dakota State, and then TJ didn't know where he was going to go. Oh, I didn't know that. And then came to Iowa State. Oh. And then TJ went to UNLV, and we sucked that one year, so he went to UNLV. And now TJ's leaving again. And maybe we'll come back to come back to Ames together. Crystal Ball has been projected to come to Iowa State. Too. Yeah. That'd be so. sweet. Which I haven't really heard a crystal ball for transfers before, but hopefully that'll happen. So yeah, we got the six eight guy from Washington State. Jazz is his name. Jazz, I can't. I, it, I'm not a really good reader, and that looked intimidating. I You're not a good to, reader. No, and uh, so oh, hopefully he comes in with Foster. Oh. Yeah, he's six eight. He's as tall as Solomon. Yeah, I think him and Hilton will get along. Yeah. And we got D Rob back. That's uh, TJ's first assistant coming yeah. back. He is the lead recruiter for Foster. I think that's huge to get to keep Foster. And he was also lead recruiter for Tyrese. And Ar- arguably, the, the the two pieces we're going to build this program yeah. on. So yeah, I think it makes sense. I really like D Rob. He's a really nice guy. He he's very chill. I think the. Players love him just because he's a really likable guy, and like I think he really goes to bat for them. So I think he's will be a great hire. He's been around Iowa State for a long time, so I think that's a a good a good hire. Um, 
and obviously the, the ability to keep Foster and Tyrese Hunter is going to be huge too. So I, uh, when we, when the manager used to play a pickup, um, I would have to guard D Rob really? and he's like six, five, so I'm sure two forty. So how'd that work out? Not great. Yeah. I can imagine. He would get pissed off too. And like just throw his shoulder yeah. and then yeah. like yeah. I'd end up in the wall and like, like a couple of bruises. Like, you, gotta, you want to call anything? I'm like, no. Yeah. No, he was good. Yeah. And he also uh, has a son. I think he's probably going to be a freshman or will be in high school soon. And I think he'll be hopefully yeah. a big kid. So I think yeah, I, mean, I remember him just like coming to the gym and shooting. Like he looked like he was a good, good basketball player. So that'd be cool. All right. Um, did you watch the women's game at all? And yeah, I did. That was the mo- most emotionally involved in a game that I've been with for a basketball game for a while in a long time. Yeah. No, I, they're fun to watch. They are really good. Like, yeah, they're like, I don't watch much women's basketball, but wow, they're they can they can shoot. shoot. They play really good defense. Yeah, I Coach Fenley is obviously a legend, and I just feel so bad for him. I mean, you're up two, and then you get a jump ball, and then a review for a flagrant, which yeah. is like there, such a huge momentum shift. Yeah, like there was, I think the girl thought they were going to call it. Yeah, everyone thought they were going to call it. The announcers were talking about it. The announcers are so annoying that game. The, my TV was on mute, so I don't know, but like. Yeah. You go from like inbounding the ball thing, you're going to shoot free throws to potentially go up four to now potentially two free throws, the ball losing in regulation. So I, thankfully they didn't call it, but after that I did, the momentum was severely shifted in their favor. Um, and then obviously the, uh, yeah, the, the, the no call. The no call, yeah. Bad. I saw that on Twitter all day yesterday. It was really I, bad. I didn't see that one. Of, George... Yang tw- tweet tweeted the angle. Yeah, she gets was, absolutely yeah. hammered. Gosh, after they've been calling literally everything. Yeah, it, she got fouled twice too. Yeah. And it, if you watch the play, it was a great play to get Ashley Jones the ball at the elbow and it just cleared out, and she was able to take it to the basket. And which I don't get. Some officials bl- swallow the whistle, and some call everything at the end. Yeah, which no, when, was, when it comes to Iowa State, always swallow the whistle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely brutal. That and will, then. Yeah, it sucked. To like, they had enough time to go down and make a layup. Yeah, yeah, it just it just. But the all the good players are basically coming back next year. Yeah. The freshmen are insane. Denarski's, good. wow, like, there's only been like three five star recruits in men's. So she's the first one for women's. Oh, Denarski's a five star. Yeah. Oh, she's she was really good friends with Matt Thomas growing up. That's why she wears. Oh, around. really? Yeah. That's sweet. That's like they went She's to, really good. Yeah, she's she's. That was up. Ashley Jones. Ashley Jones was killing it. She had like thirty-two and like nineteen boards. Yeah, they'll be really. F- I probably want to go to some games next year and help. Yeah, no, they're they'll be good. The, I watched the Baylor game earlier this year too. And that was like Baylor coach I can't stand her. We beat Kim her. Mulkey. Gosh, that was that was fun. Me and, my, me and Dad watched that. That was that was a good time. Anyways, the, that was just another Aaron Kraft moment, I feel like. I sp- yeah, Gosh. bummer. And I thought we were better than them, honestly. Yeah, and they only had two losses. I know. And they were big, big yeah, and strong. They're, big. they're like Texas. and Yeah. But I think we – Bill Finley's definitely building something. I think we make a Final Four. It'll be sweet. They'll, they'll be that, with this roster, yeah. They'll be I think, that good. I think next year it'll be like a three or four seed. and Hopefully, like, the fan base gets around this team and actually, like – Fills up Hilton a little more. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's the perfect marriage between having TJ with his wife. Like, yeah, yeah. Just the overall excitement about Iowa State basketball as a whole, men's and women's, is going to be sweet. Hopefully, yeah. Just get the men's side and women's side going. Yeah. Be, be, and the football. It would be a perfect marriage. We'll get there. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, we do really touch on – we talk, we mentioned Shaka Smart going to yeah, – Breaking Marquette, news. Marquette, today. Yeah. That was he, weird. He, he's like, Texas, you can't fire me. I'm leaving. That's such a weird – after his best year, he's le- like – obviously, he probably got complaints because of the – who they lose to? I can't remember. The purple team. One of the worst teams I've ever seen win an NCAA tournament game. Oh, Abilene Christian. That was a terrible game. Yeah. yeah. Awful. The, the call at the end of that game was brutal. Yeah. That was bad. As someone that bet Texas money line. <laughs> yeah. That was bad. And like Texas, they're so long, and sh- it doesn't make any sense how they flame out in the tournament every single time. 
Yeah, but who cares? They're used to losing to purple schools. They lost to you and I that one year out of the buzzer beater. Was that? That's oh, sweet. Yeah. So, uh, there's a rumor that the AJ Green's dad might join the staff from you and I. He's the lead AJ candidate for Green? AJ Green from you and I. Who the hell is AJ Green? Oh, well, he's uh, one of the best players in the Valley who got hurt this year. Oh. So, oh, so he's a transfer? I don't know. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. But I'm telling you, I think two months from now, our basketball roster is going to be drastically different. And I just think, I think um, they need to take a page out of Campbell's book and like Campbell staff and the, their social media presence. Yeah. Way it builds hype so well. Yeah. So we, d- we just need that for the basketball program this summer. And I think Hilton will be full again and we'll be back. Yep. Um. What else? Uh, we there was a trade down deadline yesterday, and uh, George and Matt Thomas re- reunited, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, it'd be sweet. Yeah, I think Matt. I think fits a role pretty well in the Jazz, and the Jazz are really good. Yeah, they're fun to watch. What What if they won a title this year? That'd be sick. Matt has, or Matt Thomas and George come back to Ames with the the championship with a sure. ring. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, that'd be sweet. And Especially he, since Matt Thomas is a TJ recruit. Yep. That'd be and yeah, George also gave him a shout out. Yeah, and I, I think I, I think our former players are really good at staying involved. And I think now that TJ is the coach, I think they're gonna be more involved. I don't think they necessarily dislike prone, but I think they really, really like TJ and I think they'll be around, they'll help. I think they got mad about about how bad our program got. And that's why they went silent for the last yeah. couple of years, which and I think they wanted TJ originally. That's probably something to do with it too. But yeah, do you Steve, think uh, Naz will ever be on the staff? Naz, I think Naz would be a perfect coach down the road. But TJ is really young, so he could be here for a long time. I know. But I'm thinking yeah, he could be an assistant. Yeah, dude. A recruiter. I oh, dude, awesome. Naz is like one of the most likable guys ever, and yeah. he loves Iowa State. Yeah. Naz and George would be great recruiters. If, yeah, that'd be awesome. I would take Naz over George for coaching, to be honest. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Naz is more a little more intense, intense for the basketball. I don't know. Mm. Maybe I mean, I George turns that. it on. He George, yeah. I guess that I'll backtrack on that because blowing kisses to the Iowa, that was pretty intense. Yeah, I remember. Did, did you know that was in the first time blowing a kiss to the crowd? It was the his freshman year when he made the game winning layup. Blew a kiss when the game was still going on. Against who? West Virginia. You remember that? I don't remember that. Yeah. I remember uh, we were doing a drill in practice one time, and my role was just like hack the shit out of George. Just make him mad. And one time, I like I ha- I hacked him really hard, and he lost the ball. I was like, oh shit. He's like, what? I'm like, I'm sorry. He's like, what are you sorry for? He's like, I, I need to stop being weak. Keep doing that. I'm like, oh god. All right. Okay, George. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Just don't <laughs> yell at me. <laughs> no, he... Yeah, I agree. Did you have to do that with Deontay Burton? No. Yeah, I don't think... <laughs> oh, I've ever told the story that... I don't know if I was to tell this, but... Um, so, obviously, George, known for talking crap. Yeah. And one time, he was really mad at Deontay. Because he's... Like, Deontay they had to get separated. Because Deontay was kicking his butt or what? I don't know what... I don't know why they were mad at each other, but, like, George wanted to, like... Fight him. Yeah, I don't think that'd work out. Yeah, well. just like not like shaking his head. Like he's like, you don't want this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's yeah, because Giante was one of the most athletic oh, and he's strong. Like a D end. He did like his body didn't make it. He had long arms. He could jump higher than any Iowa State player ever. Maybe other than he Rashawn, weighed like two forty. Other than Rashawn Clark, I'd argue maybe, but he could hammer dunk that thing. That was. Like the Purdue game, that was nuts. Yeah, no, he was. He's another guy that I feel like kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Where he was really good. Yeah, uh, I think he was underutilized, but oh well. Yeah, and we can touch on the close. We can talk about the Hawks getting their absolute butt kicked against Oregon. <sighs> That was like the closest thing to an Iowa State victory. Oh, we've, we've had, had all the time. time. I 
obviously I go to the University of Iowa now, so all my friends cheer for Iowa, and I just so I guess like, oh man, maybe you guys will come back in the second half, knowing that they were not going to, and yeah, they looked totally yeah. outmanned because like Oregon had like nine open dunks. They scored 72 points in the first 22 minutes. That's so bad. It was so awesome. Oh, it was amazing. Especially, yeah. like... So I mean, th- how was the last time a two-seed got rolled like that? Like, Oregon could have scored 115 points if they wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of just messed around the last eight minutes. Yeah. And Garza, like, went off, too. He had, like, 38 points. Yeah, he was crying. Yeah. I will not miss him. Like, I can respect Garza, though, because, like, he worked for everything he got. No, yeah, I... Th- it's hard to you can't discount what he did. He was one of the most productive. He's one of probably one of the most productive players in Iowa history or Big Ten history. Even I remember back in like when he was a freshman, I was like, he's gonna be way better than uh, what's Woodbury. This? Woodbury, and you're like, no way. Oh well. I also said Bryce John Jones was gonna be better than DeAndre Kane. Yep, you did say that. I think he had the talent, but oh well. Yeah, that was such a stacked team. But back to Iowa. It was awesome. Oregon's really good. Dana Altman is a even <laughs> two weeks of rumors. I'm I'm a Dana Altman guy now. I, yeah, I think he's awesome. And I think it, since we didn't get him, uh, he can at least do us a favor. <laughs> I'm just like just crap on Iowa. It's like be, Iowa's best team ever, and especially since. <laughs> but like Murray's really good. He'll be really good. Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray would be stuck. Keegan Murray's gonna be a problem. CJ Frederick got hurt. I'm yeah. not sure what happened to him. He'll be good, though. No, he's really good, too. Yeah, I think they've got pieces that they're going to be pretty solid. But, I mean, again, the Big Ten, all, every year the turnover is nuts, and they have but so this many was, good teams. This, this was the year they had to do it, and they didn't do it. Yeah. They didn't win a conference title. So, since they haven't done that since the 70s, Yep, which is kind of embarrassing. Um, didn't win a, the tournament title. And nope. Got the hasn't been, have been in Sweet Sixteen in a long time. Yeah, I can't like the mid nineties. We've gone what four times since then? Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. Tinsley. Um, three times. Three times. DeAndre Kane and George. Yeah. Should have gone to the Purdue game. Monte senior year. That been Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. But anyways, seeing the McCaffreys lose like that, love it. And especially since, like, they extended him, like, a week earlier, which was so dumb. Similar to the Steve Brown thing. But, no, that was after the season. Oh, that'd be like, that's a good point. Yeah. That'd be like yeah, Steve getting an extension, like, the d- day before the Ohio State game, and then we lose like that. Yeah, yikes. All right, well. At least we'll have t- – we can talk about – Fran, well, I like, I like Fran being in Iowa because like he's so easy to not like. If it was like, yeah. if it was like Darren DeVries at Iowa, he'd be harder to dislike. No, he Darren DeVries, is, he's a stud. Yeah, and yeah, I think it's perfect for the rivalry, and hopefully we can beat him next year. Right, so it's different between like Kirk. Kirk's like, a nice guy. Yeah, I think as the years have gone on, Iowa State fans are like. They don't hate Kirk Ferentz. No. Like, you respect the hell out of what he's done. But, I mean, look at every NFL game. There's an Iowa player on some of the rosters, or most rosters. So. And the way he goes, goes about it, yeah, too. Yeah, he's just a good guy. Yeah. Donated a million of his own dollars to the Children's Hospital. Like, yeah, he's, he's not a guy you actively cheer against. He's just, like, an older version of Matt Campbell. Hopefully, Matt, we'll Campbell, Matt Campbell could be better than him, maybe. We'll see. I mean, if Matt Campbell's here 20 years. I'm not going to jinx us, but... Um, we it sounds like you're about to jinx us. We uh, Iowa might ruin like we Seneca. They were up twenty four. The Iowa game two thousand two. Iowa's only loss was Iowa State. Yep, and USC yeah. bowl game, but yeah. No, like if they if Iowa State they would just be in Iowa State. They wouldn't go on the national championship. Yeah, and uh, they're up twenty four seven. Seneca comes back, and I just hope to God they had Bob Sanders, Dallas Clark, Brad Banks. Kind of looks similar to our team coming in this year. So you're saying Iowa is going to be our only loss this year? I don't. I we just have to play Oklahoma. I'm just saying. I hope it's not. I hope it doesn't. Because, like, we're stacked like they were stacked. I just hope it doesn't work out like that. That's all I'm saying. We'll see. I mean, those are 
some pretty prolific NFL players. I don't know how many prolific NFL players we have other than Brees and Will, but we'll see. Shame Young. Bob Sanders. Young. All right, well, no. kind of. Okay, kinda, I see. Kinda, Charlie Kohler. Not Dallas Clark, though. Purdy's Brad Banks. But they didn't have Brees, though. We had Brees. It was, we can't name I was running back back then. Mike Russell, I think. I don't know, but he wasn't Brees Hall. Brees Hall is damn good. All right, well, we'll definitely have some more Iowa State football stuff to talk about. Yeah, so I guess the wrap up. TJ is the guy. I think he's going to do really good things. And yeah. I think his staff, I mean, Bobby Lutz just left Nebraska, so hopefully he hops on over down I-80. Yep. Um, I think he's just going to have a really good staff to build an offense that we're used to cheering for. Bobby Lutz, some of us running on Facebook, shout out. And, uh, yeah. So um, I think I think we're I think a year from now we'll be talking and we'll be like okay like we're back things are looking up hopefully Tyrese Hunter is the real deal I really don't know much about him I know he's a four four star recruit and he's top fifty player in the nation yeah which I think you get the right guys around him I think will be really fun to watch and again we just we have to be a team where play exciting of basketball where it's really hard to win when you come to Ames and then and steal a few on the road and then we'll see what happens. I think the way we treated Steve looking back on it wasn't fair to him. And I think our fan base should give TJ a little more the because we he was always compared to Fred. But now all oh, Fred's players are gone. Steve's players should probably be gone. Maybe. Give TJ a I mean, chance. I don't think people are gonna be comparing I mean the Fred era is so far away. Like, I know, like but I'm just saying this is perfect. Probably better since he got this than the one before because, like, you won't be as compared to Fred as much because, yeah, like, we'll see. It's in the f- so far away. I don't know if I agree with that, but. You we'll think see. you think he'll be compared right right away? To well, Fred? Like, no, like, if TJ was hired right away, he had Fred's players. And it's, like, easier to compare him because, like, oh, Monte played better under Fred and George played better under Fred. Steve, Fred TJ won't have that. Because, like, we're starting from zero. I see what you're saying, but also you could argue TJ knew those players and our system better than Steve did, so we could have been a smoother transition, and then we would be in a way better position than we are now. But I'm not going to say that. I'm not saying I'm not saying that I didn't want him to begin with. I did, but I think this— You're saying TJ's getting a more fair shot starting now versus then. Yeah. I think that's—yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I— Again, we just have to. I think the fans have a really important role. Where like we need to step up for both the programs this year. Since we, could, we 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 sat to buy home. in. Yeah, I mean we've been at home for a year, so like it's we have nothing else to do. We live in Iowa most of our lives. Like, let's go. Just go to the games. Yeah. And just recreate what it, we don't have to do anything new. It's just do what we did before. Support our team, and I think TJ knows how to use Hilton more, and like. When we get down, we're like we know we can come back. It's not like oh, it's over, like it's in the Steve era. And I think TJ knows how to. TJ will re- reincarnate that. Into the yeah, program. I hope so. Yep. So we'll talk to you guys later.